Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create and set up the basics for a universal application. Now, unlike normal, when I already have the project kind of set up and example on the simulator, we're going to go straight from the beginning and create the whole project from the start. So when you create your project, I'm going to select a single view application, press next, and in the product name here, I'll just simply name it Uni Universal App. And in the devices here, I'm going to select Universal. Now if we just create that now, you can see already it's kind of giving you the basics of a universal application. But what I'm going to show you is how to take it a little step further, how to kind of um, find out what device it is and display certain stuff for iPhone and something different for iPad, and show you how to switch in the universal application from a iPhone view to the iPhone view if you're on an iPhone, and how to switch from the iPad in the universal application to the same view, but with an I, uh, um, iPad XIB. So if you jump into our application delicate.m, you can kind of see it in front of you the how the universal works. So if you just look here in this, this section here, so if the device equals the iPhone here, so iPhone there, and then it's going to, when the application loads up, it displays the View controller underscore iPhone.xib. And then you can see here else display view controller underscore iPad here. So what that's basically saying is if the device is iPhone, show the iPhone XIB. Else, if it's not the iPhone, the only other XIB it can show is the iPad one, as there's only an iPhone and an iPad. So if you go into our viewcontroller.h and just simply create a simple label. So IB outlet space UI label space and I simply name it label and save that. When we go into both of our XIBs, you can see the labels there. And we jump into our iPad one, click on files owner, and the um, label is there too. Now, if I um, go to the iPhone one and then simply add in the label, just center it and link it up with the files owner, and do the exact same thing for iPad and link that up. Now, whatever we tell it to do within the coding within the .m will happen on both the iPhone and iPad XIB. So if the view did load, so label dot text equals at symbol quotation mark quotation mark and that was semicolon. So we're gonna get the label to put hello, simply hello. So if we select the iPhone simulator and build it on there first, just wait for it to load up now. When it loads up, you can see the text hello is displayed in the label. Now if I stop that and went to the iPad one, and exactly the same again, because we told it to display hello in the label, it will display hello in both labels. So we just wait for the iPad simulator to load up. So there you can see at the top, hello. Now what if you um I wanted different text to display in the, lab in the same label but for different devices. So let's say I wanted the text to display on the iPhone, hello, I'm an iPhone, and on the iPad I wanted to display, hello, I'm an iPad. So what you simply do is go into your .m and look at the code for how it um, loads up the um, 
XIBs for the um, device. So you can just copy that and go to your dot M here. And we just get rid of the two lines here. Now the space amount here. So basically again, so we can use this as an example. So when the um, app loads up and it's loaded up the correct XIB for the device you're on, the label here, we just copy it and just get rid of that there. So if the device is iPhone, we're gonna have label.txt equals I am an iPhone. Else display I am an iPad. Now because there's also iPods, the iPod works off being told it's an iPhone. So no matter what you do within um, saying like have we got it set up here? If it's an iPhone, then do this. Else, if it's not an iPhone, do this. And the only other option is iPad and iPod, but the iPod is considered as an iPhone, if you kind of understand that. So the only other option is it for it to be an iPad. So now we've done that. So if it's an iPhone, so if we just stop this simulator, go into iPhone, so build and run that. So again, if we're telling it's an iPhone, so once it loads up, if the device is an iPhone, label.txt displays I am an iPhone. So if we stop that, go into our iPad simulator now. Now because it's not an iPhone, it's gonna go, it's not, I'm not an iPhone, so the only other option is to display the label as I am an iPad. We can just wait for it to load up now. So there we go, so I am an iPad. So that's an easy and pretty simple way of um, making the app do stuff depending on its, well, it's on the device it is, whether it be an iPhone or iPad. Now, a next step to take it a little bit further, let's close the simulator now, is now what if we wanted to switch views? So if we did the normal way, how we normally do it on previous tutorials, you just switch to a new view and that's pretty fine. But now it's universal and we're using universal features, what we will simply do is, again, let's add our new view like we've done before. So Coco Touch and Objective-C class, name it second view, and don't select it for target for iPad as you can do iPhone first, so press next and create. So it's all in there now, so we just pull it, drag it underneath our view control here. So then, go into our dot, um, dot h here, and we're going to create a button. Simply name the button switch view. I'll copy that there to save a little bit of time. And then add the button here. Okay, so we've got a button here which is going to enable us to switch to a, a new view. So our first steps in doing that is importing our second view. Once we've done that, once we've made this class aware that there's a second view, go back down to our switch view. So what we would normally do is second view space asterisk and then it's second space equals space bracket bracket second view space alloc after the bracket In it with nib name, and we normally put nil for both of these. So we we'll just carry on how we would normally do it, and then we would do bracket self space present module um, present view controller, and then the highlighted section we do second animated yes completion no bracket there. So this is how we would normally do it, switching views. But if we switch to our new view, and our new view is for iPhone. Now, just like on the view controller at the top here, we have an iPhone and an iPad. 
So if we go to um, right click and add a new file, this time we want user interface and select view. Target this for iPad and then simply name this second view underscore. I'll make it the same, make sure it's the same name as the, um, the class. So second view underscore iPad. So all we've basically done now is added a new interface and named it second view underscore iPad. But it's, if you click on files owner, there is you know nothing, even though there's nothing there anyway, if we added a, um, a labeling quickly, so ID outlet label space asterisk, simply name that label, saved it. Now, in the interface that was with the class, click on files owner, there's the label. Go into our iPad one, just, even, just because we named it doesn't mean it's linked up. See, there's no label there. So if you click here, into our um, identity inspector, after we click files owner, in the custom class there, in the class section, NS object, type in second view and enter. Now come off that and go back into files owner and inspections, you'll see the label is now linked up. And also we need to li relink the view up as we've changed the class of the XIB. So just build that now. <clears throat> now we've jumped quite a little bit far ahead, so we'll just you know recap on what we've just done. So we created the um, universe application, it loaded up. Already this is all preset, tells you um, Xcode already does it for you, preloads the interface for whatever one your device is. Now in the view controller, what we've done is once the um, view loads up, the label displays the text depending on what device you are. Now we've named, um, added a button here which enables to switch view to our new class here. But so far, when you press the button, as we do here, it's going to switch view to our new class and it's always going to switch to the uh, second view.xib. Now, what we need to do is the same, exactly what we did with um, making the label change depending on what device it is, we need to switch to the view and load up the interface to which device it is again. So if I copied and pasted the little code here for the um, detecting what device it is, get rid of the label codes, and then copy the um, switching view code in, you paste that in there, space it out so you can clearly see it. Now again, when the um, user device is press iPhone, it's going to switch the view, else if it's not iPhone, it's going to switch to view again. But just like in our app delegate here, you can see in it with nib name, view controller underscore iPhone. So if you jump back into view controller.n and change the nil here to at symbol quotation mark quotation mark second view. And then for the iPhone one, we do second underscore oh, second view underscore iPad. So now when we switch to using the iPhone. It's going to switch the view, then load up a second view .xib, which is the one for iPhone. And then, if or else, if, it, if it's not an iPhone, it's iPad, it's going to switch to the same view, same classes, everything's the same, except it's going to load up second view underscore iPad interface, which will be the big one for the iPad. So, so far, so um, we can build and run now, but don't really see what's happening. So like we've added in the second view, a label. Now if we implement the same code here for our label in our second view, so again, the label, we'll change the um, actual names, it hasn't got a capital on this one. So basically, we're gonna switch to view, easy way to show you is in the simulator. So builds, it's going to load up, the label is going to display the device we're on, and then we're going to switch to our new view, and because we've set it to um, different XIBs for different devices, then it's going to display up. Oh, we need to add our button, so we forgot about that there. So we now we need to add our button for switching to our new view. So 
the files owner, switch view, I'll do simple touch down, copy that, paste it in here, and switch view, touch down. So we build it again there. Oh, we've got an error there. I forgot to stop this simulator from the previous one. So build it again. Okay then, so built in the iPad simulator, loads up, the label displays I am an iPad. Press the button, it will switch to our second view. Now we haven't really added anything on our second view. So have we got our label to display it, we now need to add the label. So space it out a little bit, center it. Link up the label, again copy, paste it on the iPad version of our second view. Label, linked up, and stop it and build again so we don't have that error again. Now, oh, stop it once more. Did I not do it properly? There we go. My part, my, my fault there. So um, we'll recap everything that's going on because it's a lot to take in and there's a lot going on. So again, loads up. Press the button. It takes us to our new view and the label displays I am an iPad. Now if we stopped it and built on the iPhone simulator, the exact same thing will happen again, but the label will change because we've told it to change for whatever device it is. So it loads up now, so I am an iPhone, switch to new view, I am an iPhone. Now from our new view, we're going to want to be able to switch back to our main view. Now there's nothing fancy as what we're doing now, as going back, it's just simply we're going to dismiss the view controller. So simple go back, add an eye specter here, action. Just like how we dismissed the view in our previous switching view tutorials, it's exactly the same. So get rid of that there, so um, again, add one in our iPad version, link up the action, uh, touch up inside, something simple. I'm going to try .m here, so the code for um, dismissing our view, we don't need to do the, um, we don't need to tell or well, find out what device it is, because it's, it's a simple action. It means the same whether it's iPhone or iPad, so self, dismiss, view controller animated, yes, completion, no, bracket, same go on. So build it again. I will go over everything again. Oh, we need to finish build there. I will go everything once more again, so there's no need to worry, so here we go then. So if I start from the beginning, application loads up. It's an iPhone, so we load up our view controller underscore iPhone, which is this one, as you can see in our simulator. The label and the button here, so in our .m here, we say when it loads up, if it's an iPhone, the label will equal I am an iPhone. It's an iPhone, the label equals I am an iPhone. Then the button here, if it is an iPhone, switch to our second view with the nib name of second view. So our nib name here of second view and our second view has a label and I'll go back and we click it, loads up, and again, in our second view.m, exactly the same, if it's an iPhone, display the text, I am an iPhone. So there we go. And we can switch back with our dismiss view controller animated here, and dismisses the view, goes back to our original one. Now if we stop that, get rid of the simulator, and go to iPad, Exactly the same will happen again, but only differently for we have selected it to be an iPad. So if we load this up now, so again, I'm an iPad. We told it it's, well, we say if it's not an iPhone, display this text instead as it's an iPad. So I'm an iPad, switch button, and the on the second view here, if it's an iPhone, display I'm an iPhone, else display I'm an iPad, which it has done. And again, go back, dismiss the view controller, back to our main view. So that is simply how you create 
and kind of build the basics of a universal application and switch views while doing a universal application. So a little bit confusing, there's a lot to take in there. So if there's any more questions or something you have not clear or I've haven't gone over properly, just send me a message and I'll or leave a comment and I'll gladly help you out. So again, that's basically how you build universal applications. So I hope this helps in any of your apps or projects at the moment. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like and favourite the video, as really does help us out, gains us a wider audience and more people can learn from our tutorials. If you haven't, make sure you um, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Check out our apps just by simply searching Geek Element on the App Store. And most importantly, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time in our next tutorial. Thank you for watching this tutorial by Geeky Lemon Development. Be sure to follow them on Twitter and like them on Facebook. Oh, and check out all of their other tutorials and sample projects on their website, geekylemon.com. But most importantly, please download their awesome iPhone and iPad apps by searching Geeky Lemon on the App Store. And please remember to subscribe.